Welcome to the world of amazing mountain animals. Okie dokie, that's one backpack, one pair of binoculars, and an extra large box of Fido snacks. Can you carry all that, or would you like a doggy bag? Did you have to slobber all over it? Starting a new business, Henry? It's called Henry's Mountain Tours. Our first expedition is in search of the mysterious Yeti. You mean the legendary two-legged creature of the mountains, which most scientists say doesn't exist? Science schmience! They say that about a lot of things. But look, here's a postcard of Bigfoot. Too bad he stepped on the camera. And here's one of the Loch Ness Monster. You wouldn't believe how muddy those locks get. Uh, aliens? Don't tell me. Thumb in the lens? I know what you're thinking, but there really is a Yeti. I saw it on Mysteries of the Mountains. I even taped it. There. There he is. Where? Look. There he is again. It was on TV, so it must be real. Oops. Rewind. There. Is that a Yeti or what? It's hard to say just what it is. Oh, yeah? Who made you the expert on mountain animals anyway? Well, I do know a thing or two about the subject. Let me explain. From a distance, the mountains look like they might be unbearable to live in. But when you actually get there, there are plenty of bears. And a whole lot more. There are lots of different animals to be found far, far above sea level. From the hedgehogs of the high plateaus to the bighorn sheep of the sheer rocky faces. And wherever you go, you find the animals are perfectly adapted to thrive in these extreme conditions. Yaks are so well adapted to mountain life, they can no longer live at low altitudes. I could adapt to a view like that. It's beautiful up here. I didn't know you loved the mountains, Henry. Oh, yeah. I've been adapting to them for days now. <laughs> Henry, it's taken thousands of years for these Japanese macaques to adapt to the mountains. They've had to develop special food-finding skills and thick furry coats just to stay alive. Good for them. But I don't have that kind of time. Oh. the back of my hand, so I'll be the leader. Ah! What's that? The back of your hand, Henry. I knew that. Now, follow me. I'll keep my eyes out for that old Yeti. See anything? Not Yeti. Henry, how are we supposed to follow you up there? Nobody said mountaineering was easy. Henry! Don't worry about it. But it's dangerous! What do you mean? It isn't dangerous. Dangerous? Dangerous? Help! Somebody give me a hand! It looks like you could use a helping hoof from one of these guys, Henry. Who? Mountain Rescue? No, Mountain Goat. These guys are the original rock climbers. Thanks to their special gripping hooves, they can travel to the top of the steepest mountains, even when they're covered in ice and snow. Excuse me, but they're not exactly up in the clouds there. They're still risking life and limb. These rock faces are soft and crumbly. One false step and it's straight into that raging river. Wow! So why are they there? 
Believe it or not, they've come all the way from their mountaintop homes just to lick at the salt deposits found down here. Just for a little salt? How far would they go for the pepper? The moon? Scientists aren't sure why they do it. Some think the salt may be a necessary supplement to their meager alpine diets. Or maybe they just like it. Didn't anyone tell them that too much salt is bad for your health? Especially if it makes you fall over. Whoops, careful now. Stumbling's no joke for a mountain goat, Henry. Oh, I can see that. One false move, and you're a bottom of the mountain goat. to gather up some firewood. Sorry, Henry. There's no wood up here. Come now. I need to make a pit stop behind the bushes, and then... Sorry, Henry. No bushes either. All right. Fess up. Who hid all the trees? Was it you? Oh, 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 oh. No one hid them, Henry. They just won't grow up here above the tree line. The what? The tree line. That does it. Where are you going? Back below the tree line. I'm desperate. Why, Henry, I never knew you were such a tree lover. You remind me of someone else I know. Can't this wait? I was hoping for a little privacy. Don't worry. I'm talking about the mountain beaver found here in the forested slopes of the Pacific Northwest. And this one has its own business to attend to. What business is that? The leaf cleaning business? Actually, it eats leaves. But wait, keep quiet. There's trouble afoot. A mountain lion? Or puma? Or cougar? I'm never sure which. They're all right. The mountain lion has one of the widest ranges of any animal in all of North and South America. and gets called different things in different places. And do they owe their success to the consumption of mountain beaver meat? Apparently not. This cat would rather hunt for deer. It's all right, Beave. Come on down. The mountain beaver isn't a real beaver at all. It's a different kind of rodent. It doesn't build dams, but digs a maze of tunnels which it uses to store food. Which makes that a TV dinner. TV? Yeah. Tunnel vision. <laughs> Henry, Henry, it's time for your news report. What? Now? Yes, now. Out of my way, Journal Lizard coming through. Tonight, Dr. Superglue strikes again. And meditating lemurs just say, um... But now, our top story. The hills are alive with the sound of mooing. Since it was discovered that the first person to climb the world's highest mountain was a cow. We can now reveal the truth about Hillary, the milky mountaineer. Hillary got her start on the island of Jersey, where she used to climb to the top of everything she could. Later, she visited the Alps. While the other cows were sliding down the mountain, Hillary was climbing up it. She made her first attempt on Mount Everest soon after, but gave up when Frostbite turned her milk into ice cream. Finally, with nothing but a cud to chew on and a sheep for a Sherpa, she made it to the top. 
Coming down, she said, was the hardest part. Hillary, what a hero! Thanks to her skill, spirit, and utter determination. You think they bought it? You couldn't even give it away, Henry. Rats. Let me see if I can help. I have always relied on the kindness of narrators. Then you'll be glad to know that there is a certain kind of cattle that lives in the mountains around Everest. Really? What's it called? A yak. A what? A yak. What? Yak, yak, yak. Would you quit yakking and get on with the story? Ugh. Okay. Yaks live high up here in the Himalayan mountains and have long, thick coats to protect them from freezing temperatures. Now, because yaks are so good at living at high altitudes, they were domesticated as pack animals by the Nepalese people, or Sherpas. Have you heard of Sherpas? I sherpinly have. The Sherpas have carved out a niche for themselves as tradespeople, carrying goods and ferrying travelers up and over the highest and coldest mountains on Earth. It looks like it's the yaks who are doing all the carrying. You're right. The Sherpas rely totally upon them to get around. It may not look like the most agile of climbers, but the sure-footed yak can carry huge loads over the rock and ice of these high mountain passes. Ooh, ooch, backache. Ooh, or should that be yakache? In fairness, the yaks do benefit by being cared for, watered, and fed. Well, you know what they say. No. I don't know what they say. You scratch my yak, and I'll scratch yours. <laughs> oh, brother. Is that for attracting yetis, Henry? Yeti spaghetti. I hear they love it. They may be rare, but no yeti can resist turning up for a mountain meal al fresco. Isn't this getting just a little bit ridiculous? Don't laugh. My customers will want their money back if they don't see a yeti. Now, where was that parmesan? I know I had it here somewhere. What the? Where's the Yeti spaghetti? Oh no! He was here! See? See? The Yeti's not so rare after all. Rare is one thing, Henry. Mythology is something else. You see, nobody can be sure the Yeti has ever really existed. Don't say that! Do you want to wreck my business? <laughs> 